Hi, I'm Don Baden from SampleLibraryReview.com. Today we're going to be checking out the new artist series, Taylor Davis Solo Violin Library by Send Samples. Taylor Davis has made quite a name for herself with her huge online following, and Send a Sample set out to capture her unique folky tone. This new artist series solo violin legato library incorporates the same techniques that Cine Samples has used for recording and programming such libraries as the Tina Gao acoustic cello and the Cine Samples solo strings. My violin is from the 1700s. Um, it was Italian made. It has a beautiful warm tone to it and because it's so old um, the wood has aged very nicely and it's able to get such a nice tone. Library downloads is 9 gigabytes, contains 8 NKIs, and is a Native Instruments NKS format library. The library delivers legato, sustains, spiccato, marcato, pizzicato, tenuto, and open strings, with the engine delivering note shaping options, infinite bowing, and dynamics controlled via the mod wheel. Taylor Davis is a contact player instrument, meaning it's compatible with both the full and free version of contact 5.6.8 or higher, and normally sells for $99 from Cine Samples. Now, I'll be sure to include a link to take you straight over to Cine Samples' Taylor Davis page, first thing in the description below. Also include a link over to Sample Library Reviews' Taylor Davis page, where I'll include all the demos, some thoughts, and any other reviews I find about the library. I have prepared just a little kind of demo. This was just for me to learn about the library. So I'm going to play that back for you first so you could kind of hear it in context. Uh, I did use some other Cine Samples instrument. I'll break those down and share those with you as well. So here we go. Just play through this. <laughs> So for this uh, piece, this was merely me writing something to learn about the library. I'm going to um, break down some of this, but I'm also going to do uh, kind of a, a first look uh, to share with you what I learned about the library later after we break down this. So first up, let's just listen to this legato instrument here. Uh, this, this is basically the lead for the intro and you can hear it's got a really nice legato portamento you can overlap your um notes and get that out i'll just pull up the midi so you can see it Yeah, so a nice folky kind of sound. And that was one of the biggest things I think uh, that I liked about this library is that there's just not a lot of there's just not a lot of folk fiddles out there. And although this is a violin, it's recorded and the character and the performance of it really does um, make itself lend itself to, to those folk kind of lines, that fiddle kind of sound. You can see there's a couple different mixes, Tim's mix and the 
alt mix. So here is the alt mix at the end. And with that, you start to hear some of the evident vibrato uh, right away in the instrument. And there's no vibrato controls, which is probably going to be my biggest critique of the library, I have to say. So the way this library is set up, you've got two main timbres, Tim's Mix, as well as the Alternative Mix. Uh, I really like Tim's Mix. I think it's really clear. I think it'll work great in um, an ensemble. It'll have that bite clarity. Uh, the alternative mix has a bit more body to it, uh, and there's also different versions of verbs you can have. Uh, I found the concert hall was really nice. I'm a big fan of this Tim's combo. I think it just sounds lovely. So I've loaded up those two, and we're going to jump back and forth. Same performances that I've made in MIDI here, just so we can hear the difference between the two, and this will be a good way to kind of showcase those articulations. I may mute the reverbs in the middle of the performance so you can hear it without. That vibrato in those marcados, it's kind of got a squealy sound to it. And I, you know, I wasn't playing very musical when I recorded that, but it was mostly because I wanted to capture that to share um, that kind of vibrato squeal you get with the marcados. Uh, Now, I do want to point out right now, I'm usually, I usually think of pizzicato as like the least difficult sound to, to capture because it's a plucked sound, but there's something about this one that just sounds marvelous, in my opinion, uh, on both Tim's Mix and the Alternative Mix. I just really love that uh, pizzicato sound. There's something, just something so in that high end, it's got such clarity and presence. And then these instruments also include strings open.
And from that, you can kind of get a sense of those open strings, how they resonate together. Um, and I also played with the mod wheel there, which is tied to dynamics. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other instruments that I've included in the uh, little mock-up, just so you could see what I used. All right, so you can hear quite a bit of the new Taylor Davis in that library. I think I used uh, six different versions. I also used um, some other Cine Samples libraries, since uh, the Artist series is growing stronger. Um, one of the newer releases, the Randy's Prepared Piano, Randy Kerber, some great piano sounds. Uh, I've got a, a review, a first look of this. I'll include a link if you want to learn more about Randy's Prepared Piano uh, in the description below. And then also the Tina Gao Library, um, Tina Gao Volume 2. I use this for some of the low end and some of the phrasing. Now, I also do want to note that I did pull in some drum loops from the new Red Room Audio Cinematic Q Builder Cinematic Rhythms, um, and I've got a review of that. I'll put a link in the description below. I just want to notate that, that that was included, but I didn't use anything else other than the artist series libraries that I have reviewed in the past and the Red Room Audio um, Q Builder Cinematic Rhythms. All right, so let's do a little deeper dive just to um, kind of learn more about the instrument. I've got the main NKI with all the articulations accessible, loaded up via key switch or the pull down menu. Um, so let's listen through a little bit of the legato here. We've got this auto legato speed. And it looks like anything over 52% gives us a, more of a portamento. But it's not giving me it when I play it downwards. I'm doing a heavy overlap of notes. Whereas if I go up, you can really hear I'm smacking the keyboard to get uh, the velocity to trigger there. Looks like we'd also be able to turn auto off. So velocity is triggering a dependency that's changing not just our legato speed, but the actual sample between the two. We've also got note shaping here. This is turned on by default. Now let's turn it off. I hear just a tiny bit more smoothness with the note shaping. And I think that the little bit of legato up, that longer one, the portamento one, Combined with the tone really does make it have that kind of folksy sound. You'll notice there's also the infinite bow here, and that's Cine Samples basically programmed it in so you could play without the infinite bow, you just have one bow. And you hear the bow return again. With the infinite bow, you don't get that bow repeat. 
so you don't get the bow change. That's probably a much better way to say it. The reverbs on this, there's quite a few, and um, they've got the Hollywood scoring stage. Tim's room, I'm assuming. You know, I actually like this Tim's room one. It's very direct, but it does have a lot of uh, space to it. It's also the Vienna Hall. Custom Taylor Davis. Much bigger hall. I have a feeling that's probably uh, similar to the kind of sound that they get on a lot of her uh, performances. And then a giant Lex 224. Okay. We've got the alt mixes, which I did play through a little bit of, but let's go back to the Tim mix. Where's the Tim's combo? Starting to really pick up the details of things that I really like, which are the tone quality, the color, the more fiddle-like timbre of this instrument that they've captured, and then things that I would really love to see, which would be a vibrato, vibrato control. That vibrato kicks in really quickly, and without any control over it, that is what you get. Now, that might work in a lot of uses, but just doesn't give you the control you might want. Uh, overall, pretty pleased with the instrument. Uh, I like what they've done here. They've captured something that I don't really think there's very many extremely intuitively playable fiddle instruments out there, at least where you don't have to do a ton of programming or key switching to get them to sound realistic. In my humble opinion, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the library here? Is this something you will be picking up? And is it something you would be using for your work? Please comment below. Tell me your thoughts. Always love to hear what you think about these libraries. Like, share, and subscribe. Always love your support. And be sure to head over to samplelibrarywreview.com for latest news, reviews, and our weekly deals page. 